Now you cast you cast the vision, you've laid it out, and at that point, how do you go about implementing it? Again, do you, do you take it and just throw it in the drawer like afterwards? Oh, that was a good session. Great. Okay. And then you go back to doing your normal deal. Like what do you actively, how do you tangibly walk that out? Yeah. Implement we, it. We roll it out. First meet with your direct reports, with your management <clears> team <throat> or whoever, you know, if you're, if you're a division leader with your division, um, share it with them. Have them read it. We all read, take turns reading through it and maybe get some input on it. Is this you, do you do this with Melanie? Do you, I do. Re, do you yes. review it with Melanie? Like what your, your wife, obviously. So what's that? What's that like? Uh, she speaks the truth. <laughs> She'll say this isn't realistic or maybe you're off track on this or refine things and gives great input. We're so it's so important resistant to not share with our spouses when we should be because we think they might squash our dream. <laughs>
like a lot of people have a vision statement and that's great but I realize it's a lot more than a statement like it's really got to be a script so like three to four pages and it's recommended to do this off-site and what happened with me is I had a customer we, we have a driving service as well a great customer that was having surgery and our customer was in San Antonio and gonna have surgery and I was gonna help take her back home and kind of care for her but she stayed at a resort and put me up at a resort also so there's like two days when she was in the hospital, I had nothing to do, and so I had my laptop. You have such a cush. <laughs> you have such a cush job. <laughs> There's so many. Whenever parts. I see David, Dave, where are you at? I'm traveling around. I'm in Colorado. Yeah, I'm, I'm working. Hey, I'm like, dude, seriously. I'm actually, the Hill Country Resort, and so I thought this is a great time to do my vision because I'm away from the office, away from the family, which is hard, but it really gave me time to focus. And that's what's recommended: is go to a hotel, go offsite. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. Right. Just go to the beach. Go be in a hammock. Just away from everything where there's no distractions mm. I, I just started free riding and so and so it's like projecting yourself and i'm not in jealous woo woo stuff but it's like where do i see this business in three years you know what's it going to look like and you just kind of imagine what yeah. what you want it to be like and then write in the present tense we're debt free we have five million dollars in revenue just whatever just just you know it's got to be realistic but right. yeah but but stretch it make it a big goal Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. So I wrote four pages of what I want it to look like. And then quarterly, at least, we'll review it and see where we are. If we've reached that point, then we kind of put a green highlight through it. Like, okay, we've achieved that. And if we're working on it now, like maybe a yellow highlight. But it's it's, it's in progress. It's in progress, right. Uh, when you said that, I, I can picture uh, Megan and I have done this multiple times. Um, usually when we, when we get away from home, get away from work, and we leave town, my brain is the freest it is. Uh, just getting away, just a quick trip, something, two day, three days, like you described. Uh, immediately my, the stress levels kind of, uh, I feel like, okay, so like when you're in a forest, everyone talks about you're in a forest, you don't see, when you're, you see the trees, but you don't see the forest, right? Right, right. And so you're just so tunnel vision on solving problems, executing the game plan, whatever it is. The day to day. The day to day yeah, swallows you up. And, yeah. So it's hard to have vision when you're stuck in that. And it's amazing. It just takes about a day to remove yourself from that. And your brain kind of opens up again. Like, oh, now I can see 30,000 feet. Like when you're on the plane, you're like, oh, that's what's going on over there. So it is highly effective. Mm -hmm. and, and I do this probably three times a year. Good. Actually, I do this. Right. I do this multiple times a year for each company, kind of each phase of where we're at. It's it's very very helpful, mm -hmm. and it's important when we roll this out to our team. Not everybody's going to accept it. There's probably like fifteen percent or a small minority major, minority that maybe don't like the way that you're going, and that's okay. We wish them the what the best, but this is where this is our vision. This is where we're heading, and most of the employees or your team will jump on board with it and say, "Yeah, let's do this. We're on board." But it's okay. I just want to give some encouragement. If, if not everybody accepts it, that's okay. We just help them find another area and move them along. Um, but it'll really bring uh, alignment to the team that we're all on the same track together. So what does that look like? So uh, looking at a vision, vision plan, you've talked about, you kind of set your goals, right? Could be monetarily, could be um, rolling out a new product that you know you've been wanting to do for the past year or however long. Uh, it could be uh, closing a department down. It could be closing a division down. The, the money suck. The vacuum suck on one part of your business that just, you just make no money. You lose money. But yet you're having a hard time closing it down because you have such emotional attachment to it. <laughs> it's not crazy. It is wild. It is. That's a real it thing. Is. It really is. I know. I'm just, I'm sympathizing because I feel yeah. the same way. Like, yeah. okay, I'm not going to give up on this. I'm going to. But, but why don't we just give up yeah. on it? It frees up so much energy. I'm so close <laughs> to doing that. And I'm so waiting. I'm counting down the days, actually, <laughs> till that's done. Because I've wanted to do something like that for two years now on one part of my business. We're so goal-oriented. We don't want to admit defeat <clears> on one area. But it's really not. It's going to free us up. It and frees that's us. one thing I wrote down. It tells us what we don't do. You know, when we have this clear vision, we don't have to go all these different directions and chasing every sh shiny object that comes along. So it gives us... Um, some boundaries of what we don't do. We're just going to stay on that course, stay on that trajectory. That's good. So you've got vision, which is how you get there. Yeah, vision is where we're going to go, where we're going to be Vision is where, years. yep, is, how, is where we're right. going to go. Uh-huh. And then? And the values, mission, vision, and values. Values are, are who we are. 
as a person. And the values of your company really reflect who you are as a person, mm -hmm. and we spread them throughout the company. And like, you know, our first value is, is respect for customers, coworkers, and competitors. Our competitor, we respect everybody. We just bring respect. That's our first value is to respect customers, coworkers, and competitors. So that's who we are as a company. And you, you know, we have, I think, six values. Um, so it doesn't have to be a whole bunch of them, but that's who you are, are your values. And then your vision we just talked about, we look at three years down the road, where we're gonna be as a company. And then the mission is our strategy. That's how we're gonna get there. What are we gonna do to reach that vision? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it does. So you've got, now let's talk about, so yeah, now you cast, you cast the vision, you've laid it out. And at that point, how do you go about implementing it? Again, do you, do you take it and just throw it in the drawer like afterwards? Oh, that was a good session. Great. Okay. And then you go back to doing your normal deal. Like what do you actively, how do you tangibly walk that out? Yeah. Implement we, it. We roll it out. First meet with your direct reports, with your management <clears> team <throat> or whoever, you know, if you're, if you're a division leader with your division, um, share it with them. Have them read it. We all read, take turns reading through it and maybe get some input on it. Is this you, do you do this with Melanie? Do you I do, do you yes. review it with Melanie? Like what Absolutely. your your wife obviously. So what's that what's that like? Uh, she speaks the truth. <laughs> She'll say this isn't realistic or maybe you're off track on this or refine things and gives great input. And we're so it's so important resistant to not share with our spouses when we should be. Because we think they might squash our dream. Exactly. And, and sometimes she does it, it's for the best. But not often. I think to your point, that's the we can be so optimistic entrepreneurs for the most part are very optimistic people it's just gonna work out very driven very laser focus and and thankfully uh abba our daddy heavenly father will give us a spouse that may not be so optimistic on things because that's what we need <laughs> it's like that no that's just not gonna work out right it's like the same thing of being surrounded by yes men they always just tell you exactly what you want to hear, so you they never disappoint you. That's the worst. And it is the worst. So if you have a yes spouse says yes to everything, that's a big indicator that that's not a good. That's that's you've set that situation. Mean, you've set that scenario because they you don't listen to them. Right mm -hmm. at that point, you, you don't listen to when they say, they've said in the past, and you, you just said no. I'm gonna. I'm just not gonna listen to you. So now that it doesn't matter. So now. So in other words. You can change that, right? You can change that with your spouse because everything we do in our businesses, it affects our families. Absolutely. Everything. There's right. no separation. Ex yes. We brought that up before, and that is so true. It's not like now I'm away from work, I'm with family. It's your, you're one person. Yes. <laughs> your, no it's schizophrenia. Your spiritual life, your family life, your job, it's still you. Yeah. You may you wear different hats. All those. Exactly. But it's right. still the same person. Absolutely. You might speak differently depending on who you're in front of. You might give a different kind of... Um, a viewpoint of who you are, mm -hmm. depending on who you're in front of, right? You know, uh, with your kids, your daddy, right? With your with your employees, you are the boss. Mm -hmm. So the way you talk is different, right? right. But uh, still, I think it's important that you roll this out, the vision that you've got, you and Melanie kind of work through it together because that's the implementation together, right? right? right. And then at that point, you roll it out to the team, mm -hmm. to exactly. your managers. And I'd go beyond that. You even go to your vendors or your suppliers or your, your bankers. Let them know where you're going as a company. They love to see that. They want to see who they're dealing with. Like, oh, wow, this guy's really got some big plans. He's got, mm -hmm. he's they intentional take you about They take things. you seriously. They really do. And they can also plan too. So true. Your suppliers may think, oh, wow, we're not ready to supply it to that level. Like, we better step things up on our end. Because so. you might pass them over. Because when you do go to implement it and they they weren't ready to implement it for you, then you're like, well, I'm going to go to the next guy then. Mm -hmm. Because you can't service me. I'm going to go to this guy who can service me. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right? Yeah. So it's yeah, it's good all the way around. So it's not just internal. It's an external document that That's you really good. want to share. Um, one thing we're doing right now is is KRAs, key result areas that we do. In, um, I, it's, it's like not a job description, but what you want that job to to look like when it's done. It's not, not like every day I want this floor swept. I don't care about that. I care about a clean floor, <laughs> you know? So That's it's good. the outcome that you're looking at. So so they just how they do it is up to them, but I just want a clean floor every day. Throughout the day. Throughout the day, right. And Not just the that. last part of, not just in the morning. Mm -hmm. 
So we're doing this That's with good. our team to make sure there's no overlap where maybe like, oh, I thought I was going to sweep the floor. Oh, I thought that was my job. So it's really divine. And then when you show clarity. up, you wind up sweeping the floor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or I didn't know that was my job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Could be the opposite. Nobody was in charge of that. I once, um, I had another entrepreneur tell me, and it was funny, he, he caught me out cleaning up a job site or something. It was me. And he's like, hey, what are you doing? Another, another guy. And he goes, you know, my dad said that you always know who the owner is. He's on a job site. He's always the one cleaning. Mm. Isn't that funny? It's, yes. It's that mentality. We show up and we see something like, hey, how come they didn't, how come my team didn't do it? Why am I doing this? Am I the only one who cares around here? And to your point, I think this is where, what did you call it? The K? The KRA, key result areas. So we can look and see, okay, who is responsible for this? Right. This is important. It is. This is the stuff really that, is. this is the stuff that really, um, for those who might be listening who are in a role of maybe you're not an entrepreneur, but you hope to be an entrepreneur one day and, and you're, you're studying, you're thinking about it. If you want to excel in your workplace and you really want your, your employer to love you, this is where you shine. You, you, you just, you have that initiative. You don't wait to be told. You just jumped on it. You knew it had to be done. Right. It's really, really important. And it seems like we got off, but we really didn't because it's all part of the same vision. When people know what they're doing and they have a goal to get there, know who does what, it's it's all part of the same process. That's good. So what what else? Um, I was thinking of look, well, I was thinking of my daughter um, that's out of college and working in Austin. Like you, what you just said, she was kind of asking how to excel or how to get in work. Yes. And that's really the basic things we <clears> told her: is get there on time, do your work. Do it quickly, and then ask for more responsibility. What else can mm, I do? That's big. Who, what, you know, what boss would not want to hear that? You know, no, we love hearing that. They, she'll just grow up so fast, advance into the company. That's right. That's exactly right. Um, I've always found that uh, with all the people that I employ, it's it's always the ones that, and kind of anticipated what I what I needed next because they've been watching the process, and what we do is very process driven. It just repeats. It might be a different day of the week different part of the month, but it's like, hey, we're, we're about to, that same thing is about to happen again. And so the team that's been around me, that's been able to anticipate, oh yeah, I already took care of that. They know I'm about to ask, hey, we're at such and such point in our job, did we order this? Yeah, it's done. I'm like, I didn't even have to ask, but my brain is queuing to next step, next mm -hmm. step, very process, right? Right. So those are the guys that, those are the guys and gals that we were like, Oh, wow, we have a superstar here. Yeah. And it's that simple. They it anticipated. Is. I'd go even a step farther. It's it's better to make the wrong decision to, to make no decision. I'd that's rather have good. somebody that's out there trying and failing and trying and learning and growing than somebody that just doesn't want, oh, I don't want to take a chance. I thought I might mess it up. Like, ah, you know, uh, just get out there and do something. Please <laughs> make it happen. Please just make it rain. Make something happen here. Right. That's good. Right. Have ambition. Um, do you want to go over some different areas of the vision? I do. Um, I wrote some, down some specific things that somebody watching may want to use. So like employees, so the whole hiring process. Of course, we go by our values. They've got to meet those values or realize, you know, this is who we are and you need to accept these values. And so we use that as a criteria for hiring. That's good. Any comment on that? I think um, values are uh, looking at their social pages. If they put themselves out there with social media, uh, I think it's really important that if you're looking to find someone who meets your values, you should, if they put it out there as public information, you should go check it out. Man, I can't stress that enough. So we important. didn't hire a guy just because of his email address. Uh, it says a lot. <laughs> it says a lot. It says a lot. And you yeah. say, well, you're. You seem like you're, a great guy, but like. Uh, well, there's <laughs> something there that you're going to mm -hmm. deal with because when you get into pressure situations with work, uh, there's a number of things that just start coming out of the person their character mm -hmm. you know when they get really stressed out they work what takes place um you know what they do for fun does it align with what with with what our company wants to see you know <laughs> what what represents us because remember our company is an expression of us the owners it's so true is it not absolutely it is it's just so when they have an interaction with you they have an interact with me with through our companies they're interfacing with us mm -hmm. Through the marketplace. Absolutely. So, which means our team has to represent us really, really well. That's right. And write these things down. You know, you may have it internally, but they can't read minds. And that's something I've learned. Like, I, you know, I think, well, that's common sense. Like, no, it's not. They need to hear it. Um, Andy Stanley says vision leaks. <laughs> I thought, what does that mean? That's good. But he, but 
it's just got to be reminded. You just have to keep going over and over. You're the chief reminding officer. And so vision leaks. So keep filling it back up again. Keep remind them, reminding them what our vision is and what our values are. The three R's in teaching. The first one is rep- repetition. I think the second one was repetition. <laughs> and the third one was? Maybe repetition. Repetition. <laughs> Seriously. I, I, tend, I tend to repeat myself. I'm sure as you have with all the people you've trained um, and hired. I repeat myself. I repeat myself. And then I, I hear myself repeating myself. And I'm like, man, do I repeat myself a lot? And I don't mean it like I'm getting angry or frustrated, but I'm like, I do. I just repeat myself. So employers should not get to the level of where they get frustrating, that they're frustrated. Why do I have to repeat myself? That's your role. And when you get to that point, you're only getting started. When you're so frustrated and said, I've done this a million times, I'm going to stop. No, you're just barely getting started. You're always going to be teaching. If your employer... If you're the employer, you're always going to be instructing and teaching, critiquing, and coaching. coaching. Exactly. You're always going to be coaching. Right. So it, it's and don't get offended by it. Don't get no. Right. It's just part, <laughs> it's it's part just of the part game. Of, it's part of it. It's yeah. part of it. Yes. Yeah, that's good. That's the way we've learned. Um, the next one I had is marketing. What does your marketing look like? Oh, and I missed customers. What do your customers look like? Just make a description mm. of who your customers are, who they're not. Like some of our best company customers are the ones that are the easiest to take care of and low maintenance. Some of our worst customers are the highest maintenance. Oh my goodness. How do you know which one's a high maintenance guy? A guy or a customer? Like the ones that are always complaining or never satisfied. How do you know that before more. you get in? How do you know that oh, before that, you even before, hire them? Is there any indicators? That's a good question. I'm not sure. You answer it. <laughs> I'll put it back on you. <clears throat> that's a great question. Uh, we find that we do, we do a, uh, when people call in, we ask them questions. We have like... Like pre qualified pre qual right? And so we ask a lot of questions. Number one is like, how'd you hear about us? Number two, um, you know, tell us about your project. And we let them just talk. At that point, they just want to talk about their project, right? Which is great. And I'm writing notes and I'm listening. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You wouldn't match. You're the fifth guy I've called. Okay, that's red flag number one. Why am I the fifth guy you've called? Right? I can't be so... In my mind, oh, well, it took five to find me. I must be the best one, finally. No. Why couldn't she settle on the first four? What's going on? Is it them, themselves, or is it the other contractors? It's these little words that they use. Never good enough. I've wanted to do this for 25 years. My husband, da-da-da-da-da, never let me. Okay, that's, that's going to be an indicator number two. There's going to be an issue when we actually do go do this. And or it may not ever happen. Mm-hmm. There's these little things that you, you've got to, it, not everything's a pie in the sky. Everything has to be like, this is here tangible. We're about to walk this out and get into a contract together. Mm-hmm. I'm about a contract. I'm about to be married to this person to, to fill this contract. Are we going to be able to have good communication? Are we going to have good conflict resolution? Because we're going to have conflict. We are. Right. We are. And, and if we can't kind of, Flush that out initially. So ask them poking questions. Mm-hmm. See how they respond. And now that you say that, one of mine is expectations. What are their expectations for what we're going to do? Usually. They may not be <laughs> yeah, way different than what, what we you're can actually provide. For. Right. Yeah. So I've learned that recently. Well, in the last few years, like ask them, what are their expectations that they just may not be feasible or reasonable? Like uh, then we can solve it before we even get started. You can set it. Right. Uh, I, I have found that I, I explain the process. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it, when we're going to do it, how we're going to get paid, when the payment's going to happen. Uh, this is when, if you're upset about something, this is how we're going to work through it. I lay it all out. Mm-hmm. Why? Absolutely. Because I've worked through all of that with other people. 20 years, almost 20 years yeah. in business. And you you honest, experience what, all this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, and communicate, communicate, communicate. That's the key um, thing. Yeah. Let me mention the book that I've kind of been referring to. That I've, Come on. You know, I read it years ago, and then I heard somebody else mention it. So I went back to it like, oh, this is really good. And it's Vivid Vision, and I'm sure we could put it up on the screen, by yeah. Cameron Harold. Vivid Vision by Cameron Harold. And he walks through the whole process, the three-year vision and the off-site thing, things that we've been talking about. It's, and, it's, and it's obtainable. It is. Sometimes these books, I get into these books, and they're like, Did, you're talking at such a level. That's, that's a guy like me is not going to, it's too much or too detailed. I need to have something that's tangible that I can respond to i can i can apply to my yes, and he gives my work life his own and different companies that he's worked with so lots of samples very easy to read i've that's got good. the audiobook that's so, good um the next thing was marketing did we talk about marketing not yet i think we did okay marketing yeah what does your marketing look like how are you going to reach these customers that we have identified um so the whole sales process culture we talked about culture that's our values 
Uh, what are they going to look like? You know, what does somebody feel when they walk into your building or when you call them on the phone or one of your salespeople visits them? Yeah. What are they going to feel like? What's the culture of your company? Let me ask you something. Next to the owner, is there someone else in the company that can be like vi- vivid of this? Vivid, right? I'm thinking vivid vision. Yeah, vivid vision. Is there someone that can be, who would be that person next to the owners? Who would be the next one in line to actually make sure that vision is being uh, achieved? Yeah. Like we're hitting hitting the goals, mission is on point, or we're identifying the right market. I mean, who is that? Is that a gen- general manager? Is that like, what is that? Who there is needs, that? Yeah, we train, train every leader that they <clears throat> need to be training their replacement. So there needs to be somebody, when I step away, there's somebody that can step in for me. When he steps away, there's somebody that can step in for him. Every so, site manager is working with somebody. So if they get promoted or called out or whatever, there's somebody that can step right in. They can. And next month, we're taking our first ever sabbatical for a whole month. My wife and I are not going to the office. Oh, you're we're telling not going to answer this. the phones. Is that the yeah. month of July or June? Month of June. That's month coming of up. June. It's you, coming up. Are you getting sweaty palms? Yes, I am. Getting a little nervous? Nobody thinks I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> well, wait we're all how, taking gambles over how, how many days I can go before I crack and come all right, back so to t- work. So tangible, tactical. How are you going to do that with your phone? There, we are do you have a work phone? Do you carry a work phone? It's or is it the, it's same, the same phone. phone? It's like it's the me. same phone. It's yeah, my yeah, personal yeah. phone, and everybody's got my number. Of course. So, so what are you going to do? Our business manager is going to reroute that phone to the office. I'm going to have a different phone number that only they have the number for. So when people text or call me, it's going to the office and they'll take care of it. David's out David, this month. That's a big deal. It's a huge thing. I'm excited for you. Forty years. <laughs> that's pretty yeah. wild. So we, can we do another program and follow up and see? I want to hear actually, all about it, dude. I want to hear all through. about it. I think that is going to be. Uh, I've been accused of having a mistress for a long time, and it's work. And um, and I've admitted that to Megan. I said, mm-hmm. Yes, you're right. Mm-hmm. Uh, it sounds bad, but it's true. But work is my. It's funny. I had the same realization recently. Like, yeah, it's hard it to really let it is. go. It's hard to let it go because that sense of it, everything rides on it. Mm-hmm. Everything, everything does ride on it. It does, and that's part of my vision is that I could step away and everything will continue or even increase while I'm gone. I think they get more work done when I'm away. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> you leave that's them what alone. They say. Yeah, I leave them alone. Leave me alone. Can... <laughs> We're gonna get it done. That's a big deal. I think that's. Um, that is a big deal. And it's trust. It's your level of trust. Absolutely. Because you have to be willing to trust someone, a team, because you have a team, mm-hmm. to, to run it. That's right. And that they're able to still bring money in and still get the bills paid. Absolutely. Who's going to sign checks while you're gone? We have a business manager. He's on the account. He, he already pays all the bills and just gives us financial reports. So that's already set That's up. in place. That's and in that's place. obviously a trustworthy person. Absolutely. That's, I mean, shout out Daniel. Yeah. Come on, Daniel. Yeah. He's Keep a lot right. more detailed than I am. That's good. That's good. So, I mean, that's that's a big, that that right there takes a lot of trust. Mm-hmm. Wow, it dude. It does. It all takes a lot so of I'm trust. Delete the apps. That's another, uh, something I've learned along the way or somebody else said, you take your scheduling app off, take the bank account apps off, or you won't be tempted. Just relax. After the month, you can add them back on. Things are going to change. No, there's certain things. There's emergencies that they can contact me. You know, oh, if yeah, we, obviously. If we get sued, I, I say fire, flood, or blood. If there's fire, flood, or blood, <laughs> give me a call. It's, you know, <laughs> or But more specifically, if we get sued, if we get served, I need to find out. If we run yeah. out of money, I need to find out so we can cover Transfer that. Transfer money, yes. Yeah, if we can't make payroll. I don't want anybody not getting paid. Yeah, I know That's that important. feeling. I know that feeling, so, yeah. So probably things like that. But somebody late for work, somebody's car broke down, I don't care. They can deal with all that. You know, it's a good point of... You know, we've talked about this in the past, and I know a lot of people talk about this. You know, at some point, you got to take your foot off the gas, make a transition at some point, And that's got to be part of your vision. You have to actually plan for that because the last thing you want to do is like, oh, there is a, a tragedy or or then there's just a that then it's done. It's over a death or mm-hmm. um, I'm done. I'm done. I'm fried. I'm done. A lot of guys get there and they sell it. They sell their company pennies on the dollar. I'm mm-hmm. out. And I think that there's there's a way that to your point, if we're structured enough and we, we are we were willing to do the put the time in, we can plan for a strategy to to, to transition into something else mm-hmm. at some point. I don't want to do this forever. Right? I don't want to be building forever, although I love building. I don't want to be building forever. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, it's gotta turn over. A 
can't remember the word. It starts with an S. But yeah, there's got to be a plan. Succession. For succession. Thank you. It's wow. okay. We it's on like tip of my tongue. <laughs> I know. It's like, I know it's an S word. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Next, Keep going. So you got that, marketing. Yeah. So we talked about your... Culture. We talked about structure was the next thing. We just talked about that. Mm-hmm. Not even knowing the structure of your company. Correct. Finances. Okay. So what are the finances going to look like? Are we going to be debt free in three years? Are we going to be um, still... Owned solely by the owners. Are Are you still going to lease a property? Going to lease or buy? Or buy a property? Yeah. Yeah. Write down what your vision is. Be specific. Yes, we will own this property debt free in three years. Yeah, and or buy a property or buy one. Right. Stop paying rent and get a tenant in there to help cover your the mortgage, and then you have equity building in that building. Absolutely, that's Mm. right. Man, we think alike because we're leasing a nice office downtown, a beautiful high rise building. We keep growing, getting bigger offices, and. My wife and I were talking yesterday. We're paying three grand a month. Like, wow, we could be nine and buying a nice building for the rent we're paying down here. So that's right. exactly one of the points to consider. Mm-hmm. Your brand, I mean, that's who you are, what your brand looks like. Are we going to add more brands to the company or stick with the brands we have? Right. Any comment on that? You deal with that a lot. You have all kinds of brands. How many do you have? <laughs> My goodness. We need to put you on the hot spot. I have a few brands. <laughs> Michaela, how many brands do yeah. we have? My marketing lady. Michaela, how many brands do we have? She's using four brands. Four, five if you count. Kingdom Airs. Kingdom Airs are already counted. Yeah, so we we market including cool. your real estate, we, your commercial properties. Yeah, well, that's a great point because each location mm-hmm. that's open to, that's like a public retail. Oh, so s- uh, probably more than you realize. Six or seven. And we have a couple more coming in, so we'll have about by the end of this year, beginning of next year, we'll have, probably have ten, mm-hmm. ten brands that we market. We go to the market with. It. And it is stressful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of weight. It is. It's a lot of it weight. Is. I mean, it's fun, but it's like, woo. Yeah. <laughs> if I if I let one of them go, somebody might make me a nice offer. I might let one of them go, you know. Yeah. It, so but you said you fall in love with your wife. You don't fall in love with your business. So well said. Household. You know, yeah. I'd love to hover on that for a moment. <laughs> okay, go ahead. The Once we got I'm our- I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> I know. Well, I know. This is- but, but think about it. You represent thousands, if not- you know, tens of thousands. You and I represent tens of thousands of entrepreneurs that have the same experiences, different industry, same mm-hmm. experiences. Exactly. Right. Same challenges. Same yeah. challenges. And if the number one thing I could I could highlight, 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 is you might think, oh, yeah, your business is going good. It's because you put a lot of time and effort into it, right? And your family's not doing so great. You haven't watered it. That's the fact. And some people think I just need to. Culture comes from cultivate. Yeah, you got to so cultivate. It. cultivate. Culture yes, is I'm cultivate. Sorry, so that's that's great. Yeah. You've got so you've cultivated. You put the time in, the energy in. You've put the investment into your companies, and you've cultivated it. So now you're getting green grass, right? You're getting the cash. You're getting what you wanted, right? And your family is feeling a little sluggish over there because you haven't been cultivated. You're not present. You need to be present to cultivate. And um, green grass is only green when you water it. Mm-hmm. It's not gra- green on the other side of the fence. Oh, green grass. Hey, David, you got green grass. You know, the front of my yard was dead for, I don't know, three, four months because I, mm-hmm. I gutted my grass. I started redoing my landscaping. Your grass was green. Mine was dead. <laughs> I was like, David, got green grass. You know? <laughs> Dave and I are neighbors. We see each we other are. every day. What you focus on will grow. It, it will grow there. It'll grow. So I would highlight um, sowing and watering your current family. Don't get the idea that you need to go trade up a different, a trade out for a different family. A lot of these guys are doing that. And we know that. They're like, oh, it just didn't work out. So I went and got another one. And and within a couple of years, they're like, you know what? David, James, it ain't working out. Mm-hmm. Well, so dude, you're sure. a fool. You're a fool. Why would you trade out your first family to go get another family? Now, if you've done that and you're listening, okay, water where you're at right now. Mm-hmm. Water where you're at. There's grace in that. There's grace there, right? How long you've been you and Melanie been married? It'll be 29 years. This 20, year. So 29 years. Megan and I have married 22 years this month. I've uh, been together 24 years, but it's because we put the work in. How many times do you feel like, man, this this sucks. I want to get out of here. But, but you but just keep being diligent. Mm-hmm. There's grace there. Christ gives us grace, right? We can draw from that. Yeah, I've seen actual statistics like where marriages dip. You know, kids come along finances pressures goes down goes down people usually bail right before it starts going back up come on 
man, they, they jump out right at the low point, but if they just hang in a little longer, come on. it's going to come back up that's it. higher than it was. That's exactly right. And so I think that's really, really powerful. You know, we're talking about watering our companies, but the same thing is true when we water our families. And if we put our vision, and what if we had a vision for our- Do it for the family, What yes. if we had a vision we for- We talked about that earlier. What, what if we had a vision statement for our family? Yes. What if we had a vision plan for our family? What if we had core values for our family, right? What if we had an implementation for those, for that vision for our family? And most people are like, oh, a my- contract. My, yeah, a contract, mm -hmm. an agreement. We'll what, act like this, we'll treat each other this way, we will not. Consider divorce. We, we, we it's a great money. point. Megan and I, when we got married, before we got married, I said, look, I don't believe in divorce. Mm -hmm. My parents were married for 50, so 55 years before they, they passed. And Megan's, Megan's parents are still, they're in that 50 year, I think they hit 50 years. We don't believe in divorce. Now, I saw my parents fight like cats and dogs. I mean, I saw them fight verbally, never physical. Sure. But then I saw them work it out. And that's all I needed to see. We kids would be like, man, I think I don't know what's going on. Oh my, because we had kids that were like classmates, their parents were divorced. And I was like, oh, my parents, my parents, this could happen. And we'd see them fight it out, work it out, but then they'd work it out. And I'm like, oh, oh, so you fight and then you work it out. You make up, <laughs> right? And I think that's the key thing is, is like anything is, is have a vision. So Megan and I, we agreed. We won't even use the word divorce in our, in our, in our household. That, that word is not used. It's great. But that was an agreement we had, mm -hmm. right? We still have that. So I think that's part of having a vision for your union, right? Because if you're strong there, if you're strong in your household, think about what you can do together in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's one reason I'm, we're taking the month of June off is that that's the only time with kids, one's in college, you know, one's in elementary, one's working in, it's the only time that kind of overlaps where we could all be together. Yeah. That's huge. And so that's what we're doing. Um, and I wrote just like encouraging to the entrepreneur. I know we share that we have the same heart. Man, hang in there. It's so rough. It is. <laughs> this morning started great. Had a tragedy happen. Went way down. Like, oh, how are we going to get out of this? Then it came back up. It got resolved. It's just a roller coaster. It really is. Just hang on to that ride. Ca it'll, it'll come back up. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest roller coasters is cash. Yes. Cash flow, cash crunch, yes, in yes, and out. Yes. You know, it's a... Um, it, with every vision that you have of, of where you want to take you your company by cash flow. It's, Somebody told me early on cash flow is um, really, really important. Um, one of the things that we experience is, you know, we buy a lot of real estate and to develop it and it takes a lot of cash and we try to do it without partners, which is tricky. Mm -hmm. At some point we'll bring partners in and some things right. we've have, but same. And it's, and it's the same for thing my, for their protection from me. Cause I'm crazy. I'm yeah. weird stuff. <laughs> it's better. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's it, better. Really, don't it, partner with me. It, in my, in my, <laughs> my opinion, you, your wife, that's the partner. That's that's right. Right? And so I think, uh, Megan, she's my partner. And so I, I said, look, you and I, we can do this together. And um, But still, I mean, it, it creates cash crunches. Mm -hmm. And to be able to work through that, I was praying this morning before I got out of the vehicle. I said, um, last night I was driving. It's all about, it's all about, look, in the end, if we're not rooted in Christ, then what are we rooted in, right? And so last night I was, I was driving uh, home, Rocco and I were driving home and and uh, it was dark, and I was just praying. I was rebu I was rebuking the devourer. You know, the devil's known as the devourer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I was rebuking the devourer over my businesses, over my family, over my possessions, well, everything that I'm a steward of, right? And um, and Rocco says, "Daddy, what are you doing?" Because mm -hmm. he could. I was because I was I was I pray out loud, mm -hmm. right? And so, uh, but I was not loud, loud. It was just. Under my breath, I was praying, and Daddy's and Rocco says, "Daddy, what are you doing?" I said, "I'm rebuking the devourer." He goes, "The bad man." I said, "Yeah." He goes, "Okay, Daddy. Yeah. All right, that's he good." Seeks to still kill and destroy. It's exactly right. And sometimes you might pray specifically rebuking over the he's stealing right now. Mm -hmm. We feel like, hey, we should have that uh, that contract should have already come in. Why did it get held up? Or why did it go to someone else? Why did it go to someone else? He said, well, that's just, you know, that's God's plan. Okay. But some things happen that are not God's plan. The enemy is actively at work. And are we, do we have our foot on the throat of the enemy or does he have his foot on our throat? Because it can be like that. So getting right with God spiritually, we got to be in a good, healthy, spiritual battle in our companies. 
We're in the marketplace. Yeah. You're out there. You're in the marketplace. You're 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 exposed. <laughs> right? Absolutely. And a lot of times we don't think about praying for our business. No, we need to. <laughs> it's all on, part of it. Um, shout out Brad Lomax, who owns Water Street Restaurants downtown. Mm-hmm. He's a local business guy. He's been at it for years and years. Just a great friend. He told me one time, I said, well, how did you do it? He said, prayer. He said he prays every night for his business. You know, of course, his family and everything else, but he prays for this his This is important. Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's wisdom. And it's crucial. It it's got to be a part of your implementation strategy is prayer is not. It needs to happen all throughout the day. Right. Prayer without ceasing doesn't mean you got to go and and find a corner and pray. It means just before you get on that call during that that call and you're like, oh, I can hear this customer. They're worked up. Oh, Holy Spirit. Give me the words to speak. I need wisdom right here, right now. And I blew it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's it. Give me the words to say. Give me the words to say. Right. How do you how do we address like you said, you had something go on at work today. and You're like, oh, my goodness, what do I do? Well, Holy Spirit work. Please be at work in this situation right here, right now. I invite you in, you know. And shout out to Isaac, director of operations, who jumped right in there, was handling the dilemma and worked it out. So this is it. Yeah, it's right. Great people. And, and this is this is kind of that part of that blessing uh, that flows when we're f- when we connect our businesses fully into the source of the kingdom mm-hmm. kingdom. Just plug it right into the outlet and invite the Holy Spirit in to your to your day. He's there to help us. He is known as the helper. And he said, well, that's just spiritual things, right? We are spiritual. <laughs> that's right. We are spiritual things. We are spirit. We are spirit man with flesh on top. We're a spirit man. And he cares about the work that we do. And he's the comforter. And he is the comforter. Yeah, we need that. We yeah. need that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what we else? did brand. We did leadership. Our leadership structure, training leaders. We talked about replacements, having somebody. A, a pastor said one time, you need to have somebody you're following, somebody you're walking beside, and yeah, somebody good. that you're, you're teaching. That's good. Yes. Yeah, so all three levels. You need to be doing all three at once. Your sales, what do your sales look like? Do you have a sales team? What is, you know, do they do cold calls? Just the whole sales process is so important. Mm-hmm. Your IOR, ROI per project. So oh, I know you good. deal with that a lot better. Absolutely. Than you do. Yeah, absolutely. We what's always making us money, what's not? Yeah. And and cut off what's not. Mm-hmm. We, re, we restructured our entire remodeling business to pull away from whole house remodeling, whole house renovations. They call you with something to do in every single room. Every single room, it might be a hundred thousand dollar ticket, two hundred thousand dollar ticket, but it takes you six to seven months to do it. So in the end, you make a hundred, you make maybe I don't know, ten percent. So you may have made twenty thousand bucks after, after six months. That's nothing. Why are we doing it? Oh, because the gross ticket is huge. So it's for vanity, right? But it, have you said that vanity yes. is uh, gross? Gross sales is for vanity, or I don't know, there's, a, there's a saying that goes with that. If you're just targeting the ticket, right? That's for vanity, but your net is what actually matters. Exactly, what you're that's making. So true, right? Yeah, we all brag about our revenue. You know, we did 50 million a year, whatever revenue. Oh, that's a great number. But how much did you spend? You know, and, yeah, did you, the, you could have spent more than that and that's have a, negative cash flow. That's exactly right. So that's that's a key indicator. Is is look and see what makes you money. Focus on that. Drop off the other things. A couple years ago, I think two years ago, I went to kitchens and baths, kitchens and baths, kitchens and baths, because we make money on those things. And our guys get really good at it mm-hmm. versus being spread all out. So, yes. And the last one I had is operations. So what your operations look like. So. And what does it look like? Uh, <laughs> we'll find out in a month when we get back from our sabbatical. <laughs> it's making sure that your team, it's making sure your team can take point. Right. And, and that's what I was saying before you, you answered it is I said, look, if, if you're not there, who's making sure that all of this is being implemented? And, and your state, your, your response was, Everybody. If they're trained properly, everybody's responsible for this. Right? Right. Yeah. And I think to get people to that level takes a lot of intentionality from the leadership. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. How, what do you see your role as, as the CEO over your businesses? What are your three main objectives, the most important things that you do? Cast the vision. Very good. Move us in the direction of... No right or wrong answer. I'm not yeah. trying to pinpoint. I'm just curious. I would say cast cast the vision of where we're going. Um, implementation of how we're going to get there. So cast it, show them the steps, and then come back and review it. How are we doing? Oh, very good. Yeah, I've, I've kind of thought this through. I've caught you on the spot, and we're almost exactly mm-hmm. aligned. But mine are the vision. First of all, you got to set those values, the mission, vision, and values for your company set those out and then the people are the next thing we hire people based on those and i'm so fortunate to have great people that 
leaders on the leadership team that align with that, the mission, vision, and values. And the last one's the numbers that we brought up too, like got to make sure that we're pulling a profit that we can afford to pay these people. Hmm. I feel responsible for them. You know, they're providing for their families. I'm responsible to make sure I don't go off and buy a jet, you know, and bankrupt the company. Can you buy a 10% of the jet? (laughs) Maybe a small, small, (laughs) maybe a tire. (laughs) Ah, that's good. But anyway. Yeah, that's good. Hey, David, thanks for being here. Oh, man, thank you so much. This was good. fired up. This motivates me so much. I try to get people fired up just by, you know, being me. Yes. I hope we planted a <laughs> seed with somebody that, that maybe may support This is huge. Great. Just hang in there, entrepreneur. Vision for your business, vision for your company is crucial. If you personally have lost your vision for what you're doing, take a couple days off. Yes, get away. Get away. Yes. get away. Get your spouse with you if you have a spouse. Uh, even if they're not necessarily involved in the business, get them with you. They are involved because they're there for you. They're your support system. So get them with you. And at that point, write it all out. Where do you want to be in three years? Where do you want to be in five years? Um, how do you see your role changing? And who can you get alongside of you to delegate it to make it possible? Right? That's a whole other show is delegation. Absolutely. That's the key to actually growth is delegation. It is. Right? Less of me and more of them. That's right. That's right. Let <laughs> right. them go. My, my people tell me all the time, I've got to let go. I've got to let them do it. That's good. Gradually That's good. Learning. Well, David, thanks again. We'll we'll see you on the next uh, one of these next episodes. We're gonna keep doing these. These are really good. So keep I'm reading your books, James. by the way. Okay, I will. Keep reading those I books. And bring, I I, ha- I don't have a I don't put a lot of time to reading books. I know that's it's audio books. I just listen all the time. But that's I love being around smart people because I can glean. So we thank you for, so much. Thank you for doing. And that. your grass looks great, by the way. It is green now. It's green. It's now. finally green. <laughs> and we just got a huge storm today. Yes. It just blew right over us. So I think uh, now it's really gonna be green. I'll stop talking. Yeah. Appreciate you. Hey, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking out and learning about vision for your company and the vision for your family. That's crucial. Take a minute. Pray about that. Take hold of that. Uh, Take this. Share this with a friend as well. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. Comment down below. If you like what you heard, comment. If you disagree with what we said, comment. I'm not scared. I want to hear it from you guys. Uh, Thanks so much. We're also going to include the details of the uh, Vivid Vision book as well. Uh, Just a shout out to them and their content. So thanks again. We love you guys. God bless you. See you next time.